All right, let's get started. What is this? Lecture 9, lecture 10, uh, CS uh, 3510, uh, lecture 10, I think. On uh, The title is Longest Sequences. Um, so we're on the second lecture of dynamic programming. We talked about this technique that can be used uh, to solve many problems, that it doesn't appear that there's any other way to solve some of these problems. Um, and you build it up from the smallest subproblems, uh, sort of the opposite of recursively, but it is still defined via some recurrence. It's built bottom up instead of top down. Uh, unlike the graphs unit, where in the graphs unit, you, you're, you're given a problem. It's sort of obvious immediately which algorithm to apply. You should be, in a black box way, thinking about BFS, DFS, Dijkstra's, Kruskal's, um, whatever. And it's, that's 90% of the problem is knowing what is the closest algorithm I already have to do. DP does not partition itself this nicely. When you look at a problem, it's not immediately obvious, like, oh, I need to do this or that. But um, knowing that if you know common solutions to common problems, it, it, you can have almost the same effect where you look at a problem, you're like, oh, this is a, this is a longest increasing subsequence problem. And then if you remember how to do longest increasing subsequence, then the problem becomes easy for you. That's sort of the motivation for teaching you this today, because it is maybe a quarter of all DP problems are simply longest sequence problems. Yeah. Yes, I double checked today. Thank you. Right. It even, it even made, I made sure it shows up in Windows even. Yeah, thank you. Um, Right, uh, so let's talk about the first one, which is longest common substring. So what is a longest common substring? Well, it's the longest common substring. So first off, what is a substring? A substring is given two strings, uh, given a string, a substring, is simply a contiguous subsequence of that string. Um, a common substring is that if you have two strings, they share a certain substring. Um, and the longest common substring is the longest substring that's shared between two strings. Now, necessarily by the definition is the fact that this is uh, the common substring that we're looking for must be contiguous. So if, for example, let's say we had Elgato. And then we had uh, Gator. The longest common substring between these two words is going to be uh, GAT, right? Um, necessarily, this is not only a common substring, because GAT is a substring of Gator, and GAT is a substring of Elgato, uh, but also the fact that it's the longest one, right? So we can't find a longer one between these two. Um, and the way you know how to do DP for this problem is simply by the fact that if you don't know anything about DP, the first thing you might try would be brute force search. It's not going to work with that, that well. Um, but if you think about it, what is it? A substring of a substring is also still, still a substring. And a substring of a common substring is also still going to be a common substring. It may not be the longest common substring. So you can sort of build up tiny substrings into a larger substring, right, with given the right recurrence. Um, I will also mention that there is an easy way to do this problem and a hard way to do this problem. And the hard way to do it is the more obvious way that you might try first. But what we're going to do instead is we're going to sort of rewrite the problem to make it easier. This is a big, big jump. This, we'll talk about longest common subsequence later, which doesn't have the contiguous property. By contiguousness, I mean all the letters are next to each other, right? Um, but if you think about it, what is a substring? A substring is the same thing as a suffix of some prefix. Let's take a second to digest that. That's a, sort of a, a ridiculous statement, but it'll make the problem much easier to solve because we're going to solve the longest common suffix problem instead. Think about that. So like if you have a word, and this is some substring of it, right? Let's say that's the substring of that word. That is simply a suffix of some prefix. So that's the prefix. 
And it's simply the suffix of that. Right? It's the same thing. If you consider all the pre possible prefixes, and you consider all possible suffixes of all possible prefixes, you are considering all possible substrings. That is a jump in logic, and I, you should take a second to convince yourself that that is true. All right, any questions on that? Any questions on the problem itself? Yeah. Right, so what is a prefix, what is a suffix of a prefix? It's a substring. That's sort of the idea. What is a prefix? A prefix of a word is you start from the first letter and then you go to some point. Every word is its own prefix, even, if you consider the whole thing. But a prefix is some first part of a word. So this is the prefix. A suffix is some end part of a word, right? Whatever comes last. A suffix of a prefix is this part, which is the end part of some beginning part. But that's just any possible beginning and end. So that's simply the same thing as a substring, turns out. This takes a, a, a slight um, detour in understanding of the problem, but phrasing the problem this way, I promise, will make it easier. And I'll show you at, towards the end of class like the, the harder way to do this problem, it turns out. Any more questions on simply what the problem is? What is a longest common substring? You should be able to quickly understand what that is, what that means, right? All right, so um, what we need to do now is think uh, recursively. So if you have, uh, let's say we have uh, w1 da, 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 to wk, and then we have some y, and then we have, let's say, u1 to u, L, and then we have some y, and y is a string. Suppose that's what the word looks like. So y is somehow some longest common suffix. So instead, we're going to solve the longest uh, common suffix, and then we'll translate that back to the longest common um, substring. So first, understand that we're solving uh, this problem first. Then we simply take the longest common suffix of all possible prefixes, and that'll be the substring. Um, consider two words. Uh, we're reading them left to right, and we have some longest common suffix y. Suppose y is not simply one letter, but suppose y is two, is, a, is a several letters long. It's a string, right? And consider that these two words, uh, maybe wk does not equal ul, so the longest common suffix is y and nothing longer, right? y is some string. Suppose that's the case. Now, consider iteratively as you look m more at the, at the next longest prefix. So if you consider adding one more letter, uh, if you peek at one more letter of both strings, what does that look like? So let's say you have a1, a2, right? Well, you have two cases here. If you look at the next letter of uh, those two strings, uh, you have if a1 is equal to a2, uh, and if a1 does not equal a2, right? If a1 equals a2, uh, what do we know? Longest common suffix is going to be equal to the length of y plus 1. If these two letters share that substring y, one letter from the end, and then they also share the last letter, then we know that y a1 or equivalently y a2 is a common, longest common suffix, right? <coughs> what about if a1 does not equal a2? What is the longest common suffix? Ah, I am not asking about a substring. I'm asking about a suffix. This is key. What is the longest common suffix of two strings that end with different characters? Zero, yes. They have no longest common suffix, right? They have no common suffix, so there's no longest common suffix, right? This is the recurrent structure of the longest common subsequence, excuse me, subfix problem, right? So necessarily, we have two strings here. Every longest common suffix, subsequence, substring, palindromic subsequence, whatever. All these arrays are two-dimensional. So uh, you need sort of two degrees of freedom to consider pre prefixes of one string and prefixes of the other. So you necessarily, it's going to be uh, 
two-dimensional. So you say let uh, dp uh, is equal to, let's say, uh, n plus 1, uh, n plus 1, uh, all zeros. And then, so you allocate this array, and then you'll say, uh, you will assign meaning to each one. dp of i, j uh, should be, you assign meaning to each element of this array. So simply when you call on that element, it invokes the subproblem that corresponds to it. What should dp of i, j be? If we're solving the longest common suffix problem. One and n plus one. So where where does i and j come in? I think that's close. Here's what I'm looking for, um, and maybe I should have written this first. Uh, if input is a one to a n, b one to b m. Uh, dp of ij is going to be the longest common suffix of uh, a1 to ai and b1 to bj. So every prefix has a length. Every prefix of, for example, of a has a length from 1 to n. So you let i be the ith the prefix of length i, and you let j be the prefix of b of length j. So the longest common suffix, dp of ij will be the longest common suffix of the prefix a1 to ai and b1 to bj. Any questions on that? Do we see that's clear? Yes. n will be the length of the first string. We're trying, we take as input two strings. Trying to find the longest common suffix. n will be the length of the first string, and m will be the length of the second string. The array, if you notice, is not n by m, but n plus 1 by m plus 1. And we'll do that simply because every string shares a common substring of the empty string. So that'll be a base case. We'll do that way. That's the way we'll, we'll solve that one. Right? Any more questions on uh, simply what the definition here is? We'll go a little slow for this. Right. Absolutely, it's indexed by two variables. It's two-dimensional. And we will fill in a table and draw an example as well. Um, let's talk about the recurrence itself. This is like the, the only important part of every uh, dynamic programming algorithm is what is the recurrence. So we talked about it previously. Um, so we have two cases. If ai is equal to aj, excuse me, if ai is equal to bj, then as we've advanced both letters, we know that we've increased the longest common suffix, right? What should go here? dp of i plus 1? We are indexed by two variables. Correct. DP of i minus 1, j minus 1, plus 1. What is DP of i minus 1, j minus 1? That's the longest common suffix of the a1 to ai, b1 to bj, if you ignore their last letters, right? So if there was a common suffix between those, that numerical value will be stored in DP of i minus 1, j minus 1, right? Then you add on one more letter to each of those, and you see, do I still have a longest common suffix? And you do only in the case that ai equals bj, right? Then you add one because you've increased the longest common suffix. Um, what if ai uh, does not equal bj? Yeah, zero. That's the recurrence. Um, that's the definition of the array. And that's basically all you need for every dp algorithm. Let's. Um, uh, give the pseudocode and then fill in a table.
So we'll say, um, we still have not talked about how we'll translate the longest common suffix problem into the longest common sub string problem, but we will shortly. Yes? Ah, because that would be the longest sub that would be the longest substring, kind of. But the problem we're solving is the longest sub suffix problem. If you try to do the longest common substring that way, there is a small hiccup, it turns out, and it gets more complicated. We're solving the longest common suffix. So if two strings don't have end in the same symbol, their longest common suffix is unfortunately nothing. It's zero. We'll translate the suffix problem back to this to the uh, substring problem though shortly. Yes. Yes, exactly. But it may be into the strings a little more. It may be greater than length one, right? But it certainly ends at AI and BJ. Definitely, definitely. Longest common substring of A1, AN, B1, BM. Um, allocate. Uh, dp as something that's n plus 1 by m plus 1, all zeros. Um, for i in a 1 to n plus 1, for uh, j in 1 to m plus 1. Um, if a of i uh, is equal to b of j, um, dp of uh, i comma j takes on dp of i minus 1, j minus 1 plus 1, else dp of i comma j takes on 0. Now we did allocate the array to already be zeros, uh, so we would technically wouldn't need that, but it's more explicit, I think, to say it, right? Yes. Is this, is, well, this is the longest common suffix, but we're going to yeah. get the longest substring in just in like 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I didn't talk about the uh, base cases. I just realized this. The array, let's suppose the array starts at zero, but. Uh, What is the longest common suffix uh, between, so given a string like a1 to a n, there are a few suffix of it, suffix, excuse me, prefixes, a1, a1, a2, a1, a2, a3, right? But there's also a, a prefix of this that we have not considered, which is the empty prefix, right? The empty string is a prefix of all strings. So we are going to allocate the zeroth row and the zeroth column of this table to correspond to the longest common, pref uh, longest common suffix of the empty prefix of a, a or the empty prefix of B. But either way, the longest common suffix of both of those problems is going to be zero because the strings have length zero, right? The longest common substring is bounded by the length of the string itself. You can't have a longer common substring than either of the strings, right? Um, how are we going to get the substring out of the suffix problem? Yeah? Absolutely. In the notes, I do s actually compute and store the maximum as the table's being computed. But instead, because it's pseudocode, I get to say something really cool. I can just say return max of dp. One of the beautiful things about pseudocode, that's uh, you can wave your hands really fast and do things like that. Um, the max of the entire dp array will be the longest common substring. Right? We did compute the longest common suffix, but we're translating that solution back to the longest common substring problem 
by simply returning what we said we would. What is the max of the DP array? I intermediary values inside the DP array store the longest common um, suffix, but for specific prefixes, right? What is the n plus 1, m plus 1th element? That's the longest common suffix of both strings. But we're not looking for the longest common suffix. We're looking for the longest common uh, substring. So we simply take the uh, longest common suffix of all possible prefixes, which is simply the max of the whole array. Um, uh, let's fill in a table, and it should become more clear why that's true when we fill in the table, right? So we'll do. Uh, Uh, we'll do Do I spell getter with an E or an R? No? Okay. Um, these are going to be all zeros, right? You should be able to do DP without uh, having to draw a table each time because that's the computer's job. It's not your job. But it still helps to visualize it, right, especially early on. Longest common suffix between this value here is going to be the longest is going to be like a1, b1. It's the longest common suffix between just the string e and just the string g. So it's going to be zero, right? In fact, we can fill in all the zeros except when the symbols are the same. L, the longest common suffix between elg and g is going to be one. Do we agree? That's going to be one. Longest common suffix between elga and g is going to be 0, because there is no common suffix. Right. Here we'll do it again. Notice a equals a. So the longest common suffix, that the value that goes here, is going to be the longest, is going to be dp of i minus 1, j minus 1, plus 1. What is dp of i minus 1, j minus 1? It's that value. So you take the diagonal value and you add 1. Do you agree? We can kind of see where the, where the, this value here corresponds to the suffix, the substring, in fact, GA of both. This corresponds to the substring G of both, right? We see that T equals T. So we're going to take DP of I minus 1, J minus 1, and add 1. So we're going to put a 3 here, right? Now, what is the longest common substring of gate and e? It's actually going to be i minus 1, j minus 1, plus 1, which is going to be 1, right? So 0 plus 1 is 1. These are all going to be zeros, because there's no other e that appears. And um, no r appears in this word, so we'll put zeros here. All right. Now, we see we filled in the table. What is the max element of this table? It corresponds exactly to here. In fact, the position of the max, there's, in every DP problem, it asks for some value of something. But it actually is asking about the, the object itself. Here, we've only stored the length of the longest common sub suffix. We, but we want, maybe we want the suffix itself. We can actually get the suffix back, excuse me, the substring back, by looking at the index of this suffix. Right? Which prefix is this a suffix of? Right? You get the max here, but then you also get its index. The index of this is you take three back from that one, and that'll be the answer. So you say, OK, well, I'm gonna, my longest common suffix of prefixes ends at t. And then it's length three, so I go three back, and then it's gat. That's the actual suffix itself. The pre well, it, since it's the max of the whole table, it'll be the substring. Right? Any questions on this? It's not common for you to take the max of the whole table, I will say. What's more common is you take the last element. Yeah. That would be what we would call a longest common subsequence problem. And notice that you would have to have a very different recurrence and a very different solution to the problem. We'll solve that problem very soon. Or maybe we'll solve longest increasing subsequence, no, longest common subsequence. And longest common subsequence, uh, the difference between a substring and a subsequence is contiguousness. You will need a different recurrence, it turns out, because why? The recurrence here has zero, but that's not true for the sub 
subsequence problem. It's true for the suffix problem, but not the subsequence problem. Yes? Yes, that's the recurrence. That'll end up being the recurrence. So let's, uh, any more questions on sub substring before we get to subsequence? Yeah? Um, for the subsequence problem, we'll talk about that in a second. But this is simply a substring problem. The substring problem, you don't take the max of them because the, the only case the suffix increases is when they're the same. But if they're different, you don't take the max of anything. It's, if they're different letters, then they don't share a suffix. So simply, we cancel that whole case out. Yes? You have to be careful when you decide your base cases. And the way I've defined the problem is, like, you want your base cases to be such that if they're called somewhere else in the recurrence, the value for them makes sense. So here, I noticed that the, what is the longest common suffix between gate and e? It's going to be the longest common, it's going to be, they share this e. So you go dpi minus 1, j minus 1, plus 1. So these have to be zeros. Now, if you didn't account for that, what would you do? Suppose you didn't have this row and column, and you suppose that I'm only considering prefixes of length one or more. You may have to manually compute the row and column if dp of i minus one, dp of i minus one, one equals dp of i, excuse me, dp of one j, then set it to one. Otherwise, set it to zero. You may have to manually compute that, and then that's kind of annoying, right? Here, considering the empty prefix does, you know, sometimes you can induct by starting at 0 or at 1, but you want to do whatever, whatever is easiest. And I can imagine that one might just be slightly more complicated to explain, but it's probably still correct, right? All right, let's talk about the longest common uh, subsequence. What is the longest? So what's the difference between a subsequence and a substring? Simply, it's this contiguous, not continuous, but contiguousness property. Um, consider the following. We have A, B, C, uh, B, uh, D, A, B. And then we also have uh, B, D, C, A, B, A, right? We have uh, a few subsequences of length 4 here, right? Common subsequences. We have B, C, B, A. B, C, B, A, right? Can we find a longer subsequence than one of length 4? There's another subsequence of length 4. Let's see if you guys can find it. B dab, yeah. Right. I'm not good at uh, outlining both of these. Either way, notice that the subsequences are not necessarily contiguous. They're a substring of the first one. In fact, it's a suffix. Or unless you don't consider that b, you consider that b. Right? But here, the bd comes before it. There's a break, and then the bd comes after. Right? So this contiguousness is the difference between a longest common suffix and a longest common sub, uh, substring problem. And in fact, I claim that the longest common subsequence problem <laughs> I think is actually easier to solve than the longest common suffix. Because contigu considering contiguousness actually makes the problem harder.
So uh, let's just immediately jump in and define our DP table. Uh, DP will be uh, m plus 1 by m plus 1, uh, all zeros. Our input will be uh, a1 to a n, b1 to b m, right? Uh, and we want dp of i, j to correspond to uh, two cases. Um, so like if you add a suff, if you add a, the same letter to the end of two words again, consider that we're considering prefixes again. But we're not going to take the max of the table. But still consider that, that we're, we're iterating over, over uh, the tables. We want dp of ij to equal to the, the longest common subsequence of a1 to ai, b1 to bj, right? So consider that you add some longest character, right? If you add some longest character, let's say ai is equal to bj. What do we know about dp of ij? So if you have uh, some, consider the same problem here. But instead of a longest common suffix, there's already some hard-coded longest common subsequence, right? So instead of, consider that you add the same letter to the end of both. What do we know? What does this do to the current intermediate, intermediate value of the longest common subsequence? Yeah. So we're going to consider the longest common subsequence of the previous uh, one plus one, dp of i minus one. Uh, j minus one plus one. Uh, and the second case is that D ai does not equal bj. Now, again, when you have dp, you simply have to consider all possibilities. Everything in the world ever either is or isn't everything. So ev it's always the case that this, the, the cases that you consider in dp have to be total. Every possibility must be considered. Fortunately, everything either is or isn't. So like these two letters either are equal or aren't equal. So that, cons that does cover our two cases. Now, earlier we said that it would be the max of the, of the two, right? i, j minus 1, and uh, dp of i minus 1, j. If these letters are different, we're going to simply take the max of the longest common suff, uh, subsequence between those two. Why is that the case? So like, if the letters are different, for the suffix problem, it changes the fact that there's a suffix at all. Because there is no common suffix if the last letters are different. But by increasing the knowledge about what we currently see in A and what we currently see in B, adding a letter may increase a subsequence in one but not the other, right? So consider we had like uh, A, B, C, um, and then we have like a, a, B, C, D, right? Something like this. Um, if we add a D here, but then an E here, let's consider that this is A and this is B. We're, we're increasing the knowledge about these two s strings, and we're trying to determine the longest common suffix, excuse me, longest common subsequence. If the letters are, di if the, letters are the same, we increase every subsequence. Every subsequence is at least length one for any two strings that share a letter. So by increasing the knowledge by the same letter, great, you've increased every longest common subsequence, to every common subsequence by at least one, right? But if they're different, you have to take the max of either one. Why? What is the longest common? You, by adding this D, you've increased an, another longest common subsequence in one, but not the other. So you simply would take the max of the longest common subsequence of this or this, right? The longest common subsequence of this one, of this one plus this one, or uh, this one and this one, right? It, may, it won't increase the longest common subsequence in both. 
but it may increase the longest common subsequence in one or the other. So you simply take the max of which one it's going to be, right? Any questions on that? We picture that? Yes. Uh, I'm considering the case here that D and E are different letters. Suppose D and E are this case that A I is D and B J is E, and we're at we're considering that we've added different letters. We cannot simply say that the longest common subsequence does not increase because look, there was a D already in B earlier, so it did increase the longest common subsequence from three to four. Right? If we didn't add a D, suppose we added an F or something, the longest common subsequence would be length 3. It would be ABC. But by adding a D, we do increase uh, long, the longest common subsequence. It's, differently, it's, it's, it's a longest common subsequence that's stored somewhere else. But we still are increasing a longest common subsequence. Right? Any more questions on the recurrence itself? Every DP problem, the hardest part is always the recurrence. The only part, important part is, of course, always the recurrence. Right? Um, if you were to visualize this, um, I'll do a, a little creative way of showing how we'll store the answer for this one. Because given a suffix, it's easy to, de it's easy to determine what the um, actual answer is from the numerical value and its position in the table. But given that the table is going to store the longest common subsequence, it's not obvious what the subsequence is without brute force searching back for it, right? It'll simply store the length of the longest common subsequence and maybe not the subsequence itself. So by the way, what element of the table are we going to be returning? Yes, we're, going to, we're not going to return the max of the table this time. We will be returning the last element of the table which is a more common solution that you'll see. You'll return the last element. You'll fill in the whole table, and you'll just return the, the element of the last index. Why? Because that corresponds to the longest common subsequence of a1 to an and b1 to bm. So that's what well, the answer we're after is the longest common subsequence of both strings, not the prefixes of either sequence, but of the whole sequence. Right? So if I were to implement this, um, Longest common subsequence of A1, AN, B1, BM. Uh, and I'll say allocate uh, DP as M plus 1, M plus 1, uh, all zeros. We'll suppose it's even zero indexed. And then we'll also allocate a back pointer array, dp, bt, uh, of n plus 1, n plus 1, all zeros. bt, as we'll see shortly, is going to actually store for us uh, the subsequence itself. Um, it's going to contain a sequence of back pointers to store the answer and not simply the value, the length of the longest common subsequence, but what is the subsequence itself. Looking at this array of back points, we're going to be able to re, uh, recalculate the sequence itself. So uh, again, uh, the row and column, the base cases, I won't fill them out, but this, there, we did n plus 1 and m plus 1 instead of n and m because we'll have this base case of 0 and uh, the base case of 0 for the empty prefix of both, right? Um, so we'll say for uh, i in 1 to n, uh, n plus 1, uh, for uh, j in uh, 1 to m plus 1, um, if xi, uh, excuse me, not xi, if ai is equal to bj, well, we're going to set dp of i comma j to be equal to dp of i minus 1, uh, j minus 1, uh, plus 1. But then we'll set uh, bt of i comma j to denote which element of the table, are, which subsequence are we increasing it from. And we'll simply use the back pointer to, as a literal arrow 
like an emoji to which cell are we inheriting that from. So it's going to be up and diagonally, right? dp of i minus 1, j minus 1 is the diagonal one up. So we're simply going to do like that, right? Once we fill in the table of these emojis, what that notation is will make more sense. But we're putting a literal arrow symbol in the table, right? Um, else, and I'm running out of room here, but I'll say uh, if uh, dp of i minus 1 j is less than dp of uh, i uh, j minus 1, so which one is the min? You can simply say uh, dp of i comma j takes on the min of the, uh, the max of those two, so it'll be dp of i and j minus 1. But uh, where does that come from? So that's going to say bt is going to be uh, of i comma j. It's going to come from above. And then this is terrible coding, but I'll just else. Uh, dp of, of uh, i comma j is going to take on uh, the other one, which is going to be dp of uh, i minus 1 comma j. And then bt takes on bt of i comma j takes on uh, the one it inherits previously, which is going to be to the left of it, right? And then, of course, at the end, we will we'll, we'll return uh, uh, dp of n plus 1, excuse me, n plus 1, uh, n plus 1, right? Something like that. Uh, any questions on the code? Is that explicit? Is it clear? We'll fill in a table following this code exactly what these arrows are doing. But are there any questions on that? Yeah. <coughs> yes? Well, there may be multiple subsequences. And also, I don't want to put an array into a value in the array itself. It would be an n by m by, an un, by a max of nm array instead of an n by m array. So simply making the space slightly harder to analyze, right? That sounds more like a cubic solution than a quadratic solution, even though it's probably still quadratic time. Um, you would put a literal emoji in there, I guess. Um, let me just draw the, the table for you, and you'll see what I, what it, how you can get the answer back out. The arrow doesn't matter. The arrow is simply a pointer to which value is the sequence coming from, you know? So you would actually code, you, uh, perhaps, what is the current max sequence itself, you know? So consider, let's do the same one. We'll do uh, blank. Uh, B, D, C, uh, A, B, A. And then we'll do uh, blank uh, A, B, C, B, D, A, B. There's going to be zeros. By the way, it is important that you fill in the table in the correct order because the recurrence may call cells. You need to ensure those cells are looped over first and filled in first before they're called for more future cells. So the t order I'm filling in the table on the board may not be the order that you have to fill it in for the for loop, right? Um, this is an, that's just a, a minor implementation issue. So once the table's filled in, I mean it's done, though. So zero. Uh, the longest common subsequence between B and AB will be one, right? So the longest common subsequence between ABC and B will be the max of these two, which will be 1. So this is going to be 1 all the way down. Right. Do we agree with that row? The longest common subsequence between b and this whole string will simply be b.
What is the longest common subsequence between BD and ABCBD? It's going to be BD. So this is going to be 2, right? You take, uh, if D equals D, you're going to take the diagonal element here, and then you're going to add 1. So that's going to be 2. Now, simply, that's going to propagate all the way down. Uh, this is uh, still going to be 0. The longest common subsequence of AB and BDC is going to be B. The longest common subsequence of ABC and BDC is going to be BC, so that's going to be 2. Because you take 1, C equals C, so you're going to take uh, 1 plus 1 is 2. And that will propagate all the way down. Right? Um, the longest common subsequence of BDCA and A is going to be 1. 1. The longest common sequence of A, B, C, excuse me, A, B, and B, D, C, A is going to still just simply be A. The longest common subsequence of A, B, C, and B, D, C, A is simply going to be This should be 1, right? The longest common subsequence of BDCA and ABC should simply be either A or C. So this should be a 1, but I have it as a 2 in the notes. BC, that's correct. OK, good. Thank you. Uh, longest common subsequence of BDCA and B. These are different, so you simply take the max of these two. A does not equal B, so you simply take the max of these two. Uh, take the max of these two. Max of these two is going to be, well, A equals A, so you take the, this one plus 1, so this is going to be 3. And this is going to be the max of these two, which is going to be 3, right? Any mistakes so far? You guys are making sure that I'm not making any. Uh, what's the longest common subsequence of A and A? Well, A does not equal B, so we simply take the max of these, which is going to be 1. Uh, B equals B, so we take this one plus 1. Uh, C does not equal B, so we're taking the max of these two. Uh, well, B does equal B, so we take this 2 plus 1 is 3. Is that right? BCB and BCB, right? So that is correct. Uh, longest common, you take the D does not equal B, you take the max of these two. Uh, those are not the same. You take the max of these two. And B equals B, so it's B, C, B. And B, C, B. What is the longest common subsequence between B, D, C, A, B, and the whole word on the left? B, sorry, sorry, what? B, cab. B cab, B cab. I agree. So it is four. Okay. Just double checking. Final column. Um, a and A are equal, so you're going to take zero plus one is one. These two are not equal, so you take the max of these two, which is two. These two are not equal, so you take the max of these two is two. And we'll just simply take the max going down until we get an A. So this is an A. You'll take this one plus one, which is four. So it's this solution plus this A. Now the max of B does not equal A. So you take these two, and it's going to be 4 as well, right? Now, uh, if I were to store and compute the back pointers, let's try a different color, what would it look like, essentially? And there is a, uh, you know, you have to arbitrarily make a decision sometimes in the case that they're equal. If you take the max of the, the arrow points to which is the maximum value you're taking. But for most of them, if you notice that they're equal, right? So you simply have to just denote which one is going to be the greater than equals, which one's going to be less than equals. Because there's two common competing longest common subsequences that you're comparing against. Um, this 4 came from where? We took the max of these two. So let's just say it came from here, right? This 4 came from where? We took b equals b, so we took this one plus 1. Right. I'm trying to draw the BT array over the actual array. Um, this one came from where? This one we took uh, this one, right? This two came from where? We took uh, 
It, uh, uh, we took the max of one of these two. So let's just say we went this way. We took the max of this. This one we took, uh, not the max of these two, but this one plus one, right? This one, we took the max of these two. No, we took this one plus one, because b equals b. And this one is simply the, the, the empty prefix. So every diagonal arrow uh, is part of the common subsequence. Right. That's how you can extract back out the actual subsequence given simply these, these back pointer arrows. You f the, the arrows correspond to the, 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 if you think of the DP table itself like a graph, these arrows correspond backwards to how to get the actual solution out. Right? They, what you're really doing is looking for a path in this graph that gets you to here. Notice we didn't fill in the rest of the table full of what the arrows should be. But there may be multiple diagonal arrows here. There would be a one here. There would be a diagonal here coming from this one, right? But we're only looking for the longest common subsequence. So it'll be the one that begins here. Then beginning here, we follow our way back to wherever we came from. And that will give us the ability to recompute the longest common subsequence. Yes? So you're saying you store the answer itself instead of a path to recompute the answer. And I think that would be fine, except for the time complexity. Because I think that would incur, uh, that would, for two reasons. It might, if it's the same time complexity, it might be just harder to analyze. Because you're writing down, at the worst case, a linear amount of information for each cell. Every DP algorithm, like in the best case scenario, takes constant time to fill up this, each cell. So it's simply, the time complexity of this is simply nm. It's simply that long to loop over the table, allocate the table, fill in the table, and return one element. But writing down the answer each time can take up to the min of m and m, m and n. So that's like, what if that's n squared m, you know? It, 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 it probably would still work in practice more than efficiently. But this is simply to demonstrate that you, given uh, if you store the local answers at each moment, those can be com recombined to get back the global answer. Yeah. Um, you could simply denote, instead of an actual arrow emoji, that's just sort of, sort of a visual tool, you can literally just put a 0, 1, or 2 and then understand, like, 0 corresponds diagonal, 1 corresponds to up, Two corresponds backwards. And then, given the table, once you're finalized, you wouldn't even have to store a, D, a BT table. You could simply store a few bits in the DP table instead of a linear amount of, and then given those, you can recompute the answer by looping over it one more time. And because it already takes NM time, you're not increasing the time complexity that way. Yeah? So longest implies almost uniqueness, right? Uh, notice that if there are more than one longest common subsequences, there are simply more than one path, more than one paths from the last element here backwards. But we made a denotion about where the equals were going to fall, right? We said if this is less than this, and then else. So in the case that dpi minus 1j equals dpi j minus 1, this is the case that it falls under, because simply the way we implemented it. But you, what you would do instead is add an extra thing, is like if they're equal. Then I add a special weird double arrow. Something like that. And then I'm like somehow following two paths backwards instead of one path backwards. Something like that may be what you have to do. And that would give you both answers. And it may be the case that the two longest, maybe there's two longest common subsequences, and maybe they even share subsequences themselves, right? They share some parts. 
gets more, I'm, I, that sounds like a much more complicated problem, right? But uh, still solvable probably in NM time. All right, more questions on the longest uh, common subsequence problem? This is a classic problem, you have to know this, yeah. In this case, yeah, it doesn't actually matter if you do I or J first, simply because uh, I'm, I, J is calling I minus one, J minus one, or I, J minus one, or J, I minus one, always. It, anytime you're at I, J, you've already filled in, anytime you're at I, J, you've already filled in I minus one, J, and J, I, I minus one, J, and I, J minus one. That's not true for every DP algorithm, as we'll see in just a second, because filling in the table is non-trivial for, for some of these. Any more questions on the longest common subsequence? This is an important problem, yeah. Horizontal or vertical corresponds to the letters being different. So you've increased a longest common subsequence in one but not the other. But only considering the diagonal arrows is the letters that match, and those are itself the subsequence, right? This diagonal arrow goes up, and then this one goes up. So what that really corresponds to is what? A, B here, and A, B here, right? Then we have to go, unfortunately, we have to go to the left. That means we skip C here, and we're skipping D here. Uh, no, excuse me, we're skipping C, but not D. And then we notice that we match D here to D here. So then this current up arrow corresponds to DAB, DAB, right, and so on. More questions on the longest common subsequence? Classic problem, very important problem. You should be able to rederive the recurrence whenever needed. All right, I have one more uh, hard problem. All right, uh, we're going to talk about the longest uh, palindromic subse uh, subsequence, or is it substring? Subsequence. Um, what is the longest common? What is a? It, there's no long. There's no common here, right? Uh, it's simply one string, and we're trying to find the longest subsequence of the string which is palindromic. And what does that mean? What is a palindrome? A palindrome is a string whose reversal is also equal to itself. So uh, A, B, A, 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 B, C, C, B, A, A, uh, the empty string, uh, A, A, B, C, no, I, just, I just did that one, A, A, B, A, A, right? These are palindromes. You reverse the string, it's identical, right? This one uh, requires immediately, uh, there's two things to note immediately. First off, we're not comparing two strings. We're comparing one string. And the second part is a palindromic subsequence does not appear to go nicely like we can consider a prefix of the string and then consider its subsequence that way. Because the recursive nature of a substring, uh, excuse me, of a palindrome does not have the left end fixed and then you can consider the right end freely, but it goes inside out, right? So uh, we're going to simply let uh, dp of ij, and this is the challenge, equal uh, the longest palindromic subsequence of, now again, we have one string, but we're doing a two-dimensional array. How is this going to work? It's going to be the longest palindromic subsequence of a i, dot, dot, dot. AJ. So DPIJ stores 
we're not going DP of A1 to AI and the DP of B1 to BJ. This is IJ. This is a substring. This is the harder way, actually, to do the longest common substring problem. Right? Yes? Oh, great idea. Let me, let me just mention that. Um, notice that the, how, here's the easy way to solve that problem. This is simply LC, uh, longest common subsequence. Oh, oh, yes. Right. You can actually solve the longest palindromic subsequence by simply computing the longest common subsequence of a string in its reversal. In an interview setting, this would save you in a jiffy, but it's not actually in the spirit of the problem that we're trying to solve today. We're trying to show a really hard way to do, this is an easy way to do the problem. We're trying to show the hard way to do the problem, which is manually. But do you guys believe that this will return the longest palindromic subsequence? It will return the longest common subsequence of a string in its reversal. And if, if, there, is a subse if there is a subsequence of a string in its reversal, then it must be equivalent to its own reversal if it's shared between both, right? So it is a palindrome. So the longest common subsequence of a string in its reversal will return the longest palindromic subsequence. Any questions before we get too deep into the problem about what a palindrome is? Do we understand how a palindrome works, right? Any questions on the problem statement itself? I've already, we've already gone a little bit off the rails by defining uh, a very different kind of way we're going to store the question. What is the answer we're going to be returning? What elements or element of the table do we return? The max of the table would return the longest palindromic subsequence of every substring. But we want a longest palindromic subsequence of the whole table. So it turns out it will be the max, but it, there's another, we don't have to loop over the table to find the max because I claim the max is stored in a specific cell for us already. Yeah. That's the longest palindromic subsequence of A1 to AN, which is exactly what we want, right? That's sort of the, the, the syntax the input will look like. Well, it begins with A1 and ends with AN. AI is some beginning of a, of a substring. AJ is some end of a substring, inclusive. I is less than J, right? Here's the challenge. Um, DP of 1N is not the last element of the table. What element of the table is that? If I were to draw it like this, uh, it's that element. We're returning the top corner element of the table. So we need to fill the table in in a very specific order. We're going to have to fill in all the bottom stuff, it turns out, before we fill in this top stuff. So part of the demonstration of this problem, and we'll talk about this actually even next time. We'll do a similar uh, solution we'll call chain matrix multiplication. But we'll, we'll, um, what are the base cases for this problem? Again, difficult question. What are the base cases? Yeah. Sure, absolutely. Um, what elements of the table are the, correspond to the subsequences of length one? Yeah, yeah. For all i, dp of i comma i is going to equal one. Now, in the table, what does that correspond to? What is the ith ith element? That's the diagonal. So we're going to put ones on the diagonal first. We're actually going to ignore this whole part of the table simply because uh, that's when j is greater than i. And we want i to be less than or equal to j. So we will only end up filling in half the table. We're going to fill it in the diagonal first, and then we're going to fill it in row by row this way. That is part of the challenge of this implementation, right? So what is the actual recurrence?
we have two cases. Um, I'll go ahead and tell you the cases if AI is equal to AJ and if AI does not equal AJ, right? If AI equals AJ, what is the, what is this, what does that mean? If AI equals AJ, then the first and last letter are the same, right? So if the first and last letter are the same, that is a palindromic subsequence dependent upon the smaller subproblem that goes inside, right? So what is going to go here? If AI equals AJ, what is DP of IJ? Yes. Plus two. Because we add two letters. Yeah. But it, in, the important part was actually not even the two. That's like trivial detail. It's noticing this. Why? Because the string goes like AI, AI plus one, AJ minus one, AJ, right? So AI plus one to AJ minus one is itself perhaps has a largest palindromic subsequence. So if you add two letters that are the same, you've increased the longest palindromic subsequence by two. Another thing to note is this is another reason filling in the table is challenging. You will not fill in i before you fill in i plus one, right? Before you fill in the smallest i's and the j's, because you simply loop i equals one to m, n, j equals one to m. You do the smaller ones first. But here, i j, i plus one, j minus one has to be computed before i and j. So filling in the table also is a challenge here. What goes here? What if I, AI does not equal AJ? And uh, this one's not so hard. But if AI does not equal AJ, what are we gonna, what is the longest palindromic subsequence of AI to AJ? If AI does not match AJ. It's gonna be a max, a max of what? It's going to be a max of either this part or this part, right? Adding those two symbols may increase one of the palindromic subsequences or the other palindromic sequences, but probably not both. Yeah? You don't. But whatever palindrome, whatever longest palindromic subsequence may be there or may not be there is going to be stored at this value in the table. If there is no palindromic subsequence between AI plus one and AJ minus one at all, that's fine because the DP table will simply have a zero there. Mm -hmm. You compare two, ta dual, compare two table elements, which will be uh, DP of I plus one uh, J and DP of I J minus one. And suppose I formatted that nicely, maximum, right? So that's a weird recurrence for the longest palindromic subsequence. Do we agree? Any questions on the recurrence itself? That's the hard part. Looping it in is something that you can kind of easily remember, and I'll show you how to do it in a second. But any questions on this? The way we're going to fill in the table is we'll fill in all the substrings of length one, consider their longest palindromic subsequences. Then we'll consider all the substrings of length two, all the substrings of length three, all the substrings of length four. And finally, we'll consider the substring of length n, which will be the whole word, right? So we're going. the way we're going <coughs> to... The way we're going to loop over this, uh, is we're going to loop over the length of the, sub, of the substrings, and then we'll increase the length of those, and then from that we'll compute i and j, it turns out. So just informative, informatively, we'll say longest palindromic uh, subsequence of a1 to a n. Um, We'll say allocate uh, DP um, uh, of size n by n, all zeros. Um, for i in 1 to n inclusive, 
we'll do uh, dp of i comma i is equal to one, right? So we're setting the diagonal to be one. Here's the hard part. Uh, it's going to be like this for s in uh, one to n uh, for i in one to n minus s, we're going to set j equal to i plus s. And then we'll simply do the recurrence. Um, if a i is equal to a j, uh, dp of i j takes on uh, dp of i plus 1, j minus 1, plus 2. And then else, uh, dp of i comma j takes on the max of dp of i plus 1, j, and uh, dp of i, uh, j minus 1. Right. Uh, the only thing I want you to take away from this for now, and we'll talk about this technique later on, about filling in a table this way, is the way we had to construct the for loops. Right? Again, these are inclusive this time. Um, uh, you loop over s. s is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's going to fill in the table. Uh, ones are going to go here first. Then it can be looping over from i from 1 to n minus s, and then j is just simply i plus s, guarantees that j is greater than i by exactly a factor of s. The difference between i and j is going to be the length of the cu current uh, substring you're looking at to determine its palindromic subsequence. So then you'll fill in these elements of the table. Those elements of the table have i and j consecutive, and those correspond to a1, ai, ai plus 1. Right? So like a2, a3, a3, a4, a4, a5, a5, a6. Then you'll fill in uh, the next diagonal. So you'll fill in this di that diagonal. Then you'll fill in this diagonal, and those will correspond to the um, subsequences of length 3. So you'll do a1, a3, a2, a4. So a1, a2, a3, a2, a3, a4, and so on, right? And then the solution for a1, a2, a, uh, the solution for uh, a1, a2, a3 is dependent upon uh, the solutions for a1, a2, and a2, a3, right? This is going to be dp of 1, 2, and that's going to be dp of 2, 3, and that's going to be dp of 1, 3. So that's sort of the way the table fills up. Finally, you'll return this element, which is the dp of 1, comma, n, and that's going to be the final answer, right? All right, uh, we'll talk about this technique later on, but uh, those are the three common uh, solutions you'll see for longest palindromic subsequence, longest common subsequence, uh, longest common substring, and so on.